I have tried a number of ways to put my logo on a t-shirt without purchasing a screen printing kit. One of my more successful attempts used a technique called block printing, and that's what I'm gonna show you in this video. The basic concepts of a block print is to transfer your design to the block in reverse, then carve away everything else, leaving only your design as the raised portion of the block. Transferring the design can be as easy as tracing over it using carbon paper. Since I own a Silhouette Cameo, I decided to use it to cut out the stencil. I took my design from Adobe Illustrator into Silhouette Studio. In order to keep the parts aligned after the stencil was cut, I erased some of the design to create little connection points at key places. After that, I sent it to the Cameo and let it cut out the stencil. This process is always fun to watch, and it doesn't take too long. I taped the stencil to the linoleum so that I could trace the outlines without it shifting. Remember, your design needs to be backwards when you are looking at it so you don't have to trace it twice. But I mean, really, who makes mistakes like that? To end up with less material to carve away, I drew some lines outside my actual design that I cut away first. Using a heat gun to warm up the linoleum is a trick I learned from some friends. Warm linoleum will cut much easier than if it's cold. You can save yourself some time and purchase linoleum already mounted to a block, but I purchased unmounted linoleum and chose to make my block out of a scrap of plywood. After cutting out a rectangle, I moved over to the router table, installing a 1.5 inch core box bit. I ran all four sides over the bit with it raised just a touch out of the table. This gave the finished block a little indentation to easily lift it off the printing surface once I made the print. I broke the sharp edges with some sandpaper and a sanding block, and also sanded the surface a bit. I traced the position of the linoleum onto the block. Next, I used contact cement and coated both the plywood and the linoleum and let the contact cement dry for about 20 minutes. I then learned another important lesson of remembering which of the two objects you have framed in front of the camera before you move one off camera. I screwed some wedges to my work table to give me a way of holding the block while I was carving it. You can purchase little tools for cutting linoleum very inexpensively, but in my case, I used a set of carving chisels that I already owned. The carving process took a little while, but was actually really enjoyable. I mostly used a tighter V gouge when I was close to the lines, and then some of the larger gouges when I was just trying to remove material. The small letters were by far the most time consuming. Once I had finished the carving part of this, it was time to run a test print. The ink I chose is an oil-based fabric ink that can be cleaned up with soap and water. If I planned to make a lot of paper prints, I'd actually use a different ink, but this was just a test. You use a tool called a brayer to transfer the ink from a flat surface onto the lino. The initial prints turned out pretty well, and I figured out I needed less cardboard backing and a little less pressure to get a good print without the ink collecting on the outside of the design. The ultimate goal in all of this, of course, was to print t-shirts with my logo on them. So I used a t-shirt from a previously failed spray painting attempt as my test print. The soft fabric revealed several areas on the lino where I needed to remove more of the material. This part is fairly easy since the parts you want to remove have paint on them. I did find the ink was really sticky, so the shirts want to pick up when you pull up on the block. I'm not sure how the professionals do this, but I found having a small frame holding the shirt down as I lifted the block made this process much easier. After I got this all figured out, I started printing more shirts. The shirts dry to the touch in about 24 hours, and air cure in a week. The ink I use does not need to be heat set, but be sure to follow the directions for whatever ink you end up using. Be sure to check out the companion article that goes to this video as I go into more detail on some of the steps that I took.
This technique is perfect if you're going for that slightly weathered look. And even after several rounds of washing and drying, the shirts haven't faded. If you need help finding some of the products I use in this video, most of them are linked in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and maybe share it with your friends. If you've done this before and you have tips and tricks that you want to share, please leave those in the comments below. I'd love to learn. Thanks so much for watching.